comments on the fiscal 2014 budget. My name is Tanya Lawson, and I am the president of Oxon Hill High School PTSA, which is in Oxon Hill, Maryland, South County. I'm very proud of that. Um, we currently have um, over 420 active members in the PTSA. Wow. And as a Prince George's County resident for 15 years, um, as a concerned parent, um, citizen, and an active um, school member, um, we strongly urge um, you to make education a priority and not to reduce the budget in any way. Um, the time has come for the entire county to increase its commitment and dedication to education reform and to make education a priority until the problem is fixed. We all know that in the 24 districts, school districts that exist in the state of Maryland, Prince George's County school system has ranked 23, 24 for the past 20 years. And when I moved into the county from um, New Jersey um, 12 years ago, the school system was ranked 24. And this year, or last year, it's ranked 24. It hasn't budged. And as a, a parent who is directly engaged with the school system, I'm appalled. I'm, um, um, I'm angry at the dysfunction, the lack of leadership, the lack of vision, um, how money is mismanaged, um, how money is not equally dispersed from one end of the county to the other end of the county. Um, Oxon Hill High School is currently having a new school, school bill. We currently have 1,700 students in that school, but the new school that was built was only built for 12 hundred students, which means that we have to give up 500 students to send them somewhere else. Oxon Hill High has a, um, a very good science and technology program. Over the past 10 years, it has worked very hard at building its program um, to where it is, science and technology program. We have a stellar award choir. We have a nationally acclaimed um, um, performing arts group. And now we are being forced to lose 500 students, which is going to impact our budget, it's going to impact our staff, it's going to impact our resources, it's going to impact the quality of the programs that we offer. Although that there, um, um, we have had some education accomplishments, there are still many um, concerns within education. County Executive Baker would also like to ask you to please um, reconsider and assess the school board and the superintendent and the fact of how the superintendent's priorities just get rubber stamped by the school board. There are many concerns. Please, um, um, we can't expect economic development and expect large businesses to come to the county if they can't trust that their employees will get a quality education. So we must, we must insist and demand community, constituents, we must insist and demand that education remain a priority. Please do not cut the budget for education and please help Oxon Hill High School. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Karen Coakley. Good evening, um, County Executive Baker and evening, Councilwoman Mary Lehman. Welcome to the northern part of the county. Good to be here. Um, I have a few items. <laughs> you know me well enough to know that I never come with just one. And I know everyone else is concerned about budget cuts. Well, I'm going to ask you to put 100000 in the budget for something. Okay. Um, you've just heard an impassioned plea about Oxen Hill. Lady, you should be happy you're getting a new school. You should see what my kids at High Point have to deal with day in and day out. Um, the reason I'm asking for $100,000 is because we had a meeting yesterday with Dr. Levere from the state, and High Point is so far down the list in the needs study, and yet when the air conditioning system is on in the spring, in the fall, the condensation runs through the pipes, builds up, 
it looks like it's raining in the school. And this is not from the classrooms on the top floor. This is on the second and first floor classes. This winter when it was 21 degrees, I had classrooms at High Point that did not have heat. Two weeks ago, there was an electrical fire in the school because the electrical system in the school cannot accommodate the needs for the, the technology and, and, and everything else. So I am asking for $100,000, and where this is coming from is my understanding after our meeting yesterday, we need the support from both the county council and the school board to put $100,000 in for a feasibility study to either renovate or rebuild High Point. And just a little history lesson, High Point is the oldest high school in the county that has been continuously functioning, that has never been renovated, has had a few band-aids put on it over the years. But these students are, you know, and the teachers are dealing with mold and ceiling tiles falling down when the air conditioner is on. So I would ask you to find $100,000 so that we can get a feasibility study done. Um, I, it, the funny thing was is that doctor mentioned yesterday how shabby the school looked from the outside because it wasn't painted. And I'm like, I, yeah, I'd like to put a facelift on the outside, but I'm concerned about what the kids and the teachers are dealing with on the inside. So Beltsville needs $100,000. Um, and the other thing I would ask you to consider is you know, I know that the, um, this is shifting gears to the fire department, but I know the budget is tight, and I also know that there's been a long-standing history with, between the volunteers and the career firefighters in this county. We need to find a way for those two organizations to work together and to make the volunteers still feel welcome. This is not the time to have volunteers who are providing services feel that you're asking them to leave. And last but not least, um, I need a few more men and women up at District 6 Police Station. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Celeste Hill. Sorry about that. Sorry. Hi, my name is Celeste Hill, and I'm the founder of Lovely Ladies Allure an all-girl mentoring group. I would like to thank you and Mary Lehman for all your support that you have shown us so far. Currently, Lovely Ladies of Laurel has been in, in establishment for four years, and we have over 400 girls who have come through the program. However, there is still a tremendous need for more programs like Lovely Ladies of Laurel, especially for males. So when you are discussing your budget, please remember the youth, both females and male, and the need for mentoring service. Without positive role models, such as mentor, a youth may make a choice that can be devastating to their future. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph Fisher. Good evening. Good evening, Joe. County Executive Baker. Um, Mary Lehman, I want to thank you all for this opportunity to speak. Um, I'm going to request that I have two students who would like to speak, one currently a senior and the other one is an alumni, um, due to the others being able to speak on behalf of the library. And I think that's only fair um, in this process. Um, I just want to say that uh, First Generation College Bound has, has entered its 23rd year. And I come here tonight to ask for continued support for what we do. 23 years ago, I started this program with my own funds. And I'm one of those kids, by the way, who went on graduate from high school and because of government support. I grew up in the housing project. I was educated with uh, the teacher corps. And as a, I just finished a 35-year career teaching in the Howard County Public School System, where I'm retired today. And because of government support, I've been able to do this. Today, starting, I had, uh, as of today, we have, well, I started with one community and one high school 23 years ago. Today in Prince George's County, we're serving 20, we're serving two communities, Kimberly Gardens and Laurel and um, Alden Berkeley and College Park, as far as college-bound services, where we're helping kids to think college with an added, wanting to go to college added, 
building a college bound attitude to attend college. And, uh, and we're taking that attitude now also in the three middle schools in, How in uh, Prince George's County. Eisenhower, William Wirt, um, Stoddard Middle. And matter of fact, that's one of your focus communities, one of your priorities communities are there. And in terms of high schools, we're serving Laurel, uh, Fairmont Heights, Central, Potomac, and Parkdale. Our goal this year is to enroll, have more than 100 students enrolled. As a matter of fact, we have 100 students enrolled already. Our goal is 150. Um, and we've been able to do this because we've been able to leverage, been able to get funding due to county support, and we've leveraged money from Freddie Mac Foundation and the Jack King Cook Foundation to continue our efforts. Um, and I just want to say that because of this, we have 425 alumni after 23 years who've gone through this program that have graduated from college. And 300 more are still in college. And because of the Jack King Cook Foundation, we have this funding to keep track of these kids. And because of Freddie Mac, we now have one person in each of the high school to serve our kids. And at this time, I would like for one student to give her comments. Good evening, my name is Natalie Cardenas and I'm a senior here at Laurel High School. Um, first Generation College Bound has helped me with the application and financial aid process and I am now going to Lafayette College in the fall on a full tuition scholarship. I think it is important for PG County to continue to fund first generation so that students can receive help in the college and financial aid process, making their journey to higher education easier. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Council Member Sherman Baker. My name is Bridget Akintunde, and um, I am an alumni of First Generation College Bound and a Lower High School 2001 graduate, so I'm very proud to be back here in this beautiful auditorium. Um, but I've known Mr. Fisher now for over, ooh, like 15 years now, and um, First Generation College Bound was a program for me that I think just really helped to instill what it meant to be somebody and go to college. Um, throughout my um, time with the program, I was able to receive funding for my education. I'm a graduate of University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and then also received my graduate degree from University of Maryland University College. And right now I'm working as a um, market research analyst with MedStar Health, a local health system in the area. And without the funding and the support from French Generation when it came to financial aid and making sure that I was able to go on college tours and meet with individuals of stature who just, you know, just showed us what it meant to be strong individuals in the community. That has really meant something to me. Right now, I also serve on the retention committee for French Generation College to Bound to make sure that we stay in touch with students who matriculate onto college and to see that um, they know that they have somebody that supports them as they're going through that process. So if you're looking for to support and provide funding for an organization organization that means something to the Prince George's County community in many ways, First Generation College Bound is that organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Natalie Cardenas. Natalie Cardenas. Linda Descanatis. Good evening, Honorable Michelle Baker. Thank you for coming out to our area. Um, I am the High Point High School PTSA president, and I've been a High Point, I've been a, a PTS a executive board member for over 17 years. I have a student that is currently at High Point High School. Um, I'm kind of following Karen Coakley's um, message that she told you about the conditions of High Point High School. Um, from a parent, I'm really upset about it because as the third largest um, high school in PG County with over 2,189 students, we have terrible conditions in the schools. Right now, we are piping is deteriorated, our air, air conditioning can't be cut on, our heaters don't work, we have exposed ceiling tiles that fall around the children. We have students sitting in classrooms with buckets. We have mold in our classrooms. I walked into one classroom and had to leave. Um, 
we've had electrical fire. I mean, just ongoing items, issues that have been happening at High Point, and we've been overlooked. I, I don't know what else to say, but, you know, hopefully that nothing's cut from the budget, some money can be given to us from the budget, and we are seeking $100,000 to do something with High Point. Right now, it's very deteriorated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.